The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship Your holy. strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul sings your praise unending ten thousand years and then Rejoice, all the earth rejoice. 
He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God Age to age He stands And time is in His hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb Lion and the Lamb How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God name above all names name above all names worthy of all praise my heart will sing how great our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every strong
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family. Good morning, everyone. First, on behalf of the immediate and extended family circle, I hasten to extend an extremely warm and gracious welcome 
to all here assembled. As we gather to bid farewell to one whom we have loved over the years in the various capacities as brother, husband, relative, neighbor, co-worker, or simply a friend. To those who may ask reason for return of his body for burial after living abroad in excess of 50 years, the answer is simple. If the adage, home is where the heart is, holds any truth, then while Evans resided in Canada, his heart was always in Barbados. In fact, I even ventured to say that when called upon for information concerning social and in historical events in, of, or about Barbados, he could re be relied upon for factual responses in ways that still boggles my mind. As well, it is here at St. Jude's that he was baptized, confirmed, and participated in many activities associated therewith. His greatest and most treasured memories harken back to his service in the choir from childhood to manhood. Good, and by that I mean choral music, is what mattered most to him to the end of his life. His continued recollection of musical renditions here at St. Jude's is what prompted requests for a service hearing ahead of his burial at Coral Ridge Memorial Cemetery. In this eulogy, while much attention is given to Evans's contribution to his adopted country, Canada, and the whole community of London, Ontario in particular, it would be remiss of me not to mention his constant boast that his many and varied skills derived from his exposure to public service in general and public health in particular right here in Barbados and in Jamaica. Above all, Evans was a great listener and extremely patient and thoughtful in the way he went about his responses. His judgment could be relied upon as they reflected the same outlook. In debates, he was thought provokingly calculative since in his words, he didn't suffer fools gladly, and he learned much from his high school mentor, the late Louis Albert Lynch, and from the principal and founder of the modern high school. Hence, to go into the eulogy that I composed. The departed Evans McGregor Braffett, commonly known as Evans Braff, Gregor, to many, was the sixth, first, second of six children to survive childhood, born to Gladys and Theophilus Emmanuel Bell of Toddland, St. George, on September 11, 1932. He received his primary education at St. Jude Boys School before proceeding to the Morton High School, from which he successfully matriculated and thereafter sought employment in the Barbados Public Service. <coughs> To gain an even better understanding of Evans' accomplishment also requires looking at them against the background that existed at the time. Accordingly, in the 1930s, Barbados was typical of any other colonial sugar plantation society, with emphasis on strong demand for a massive unskilled labor force and appalling conditions that arose from payment of extremely low wages for those that labored in the cane fields. These conditions encourage others to seek escape from his grasp by acquiring more skilled careers and or migrating to areas that offered improved working conditions, better wages, and greater economic opportunities. The rights of the 1930s and the outbreak of World War II both acted to compound the already adverse climate and became the major catalyst for change in the decades that followed. Bearing this in mind, it is easier to understand the burden that would have been imposed on his young working class parents in the pursuit of secondary or even higher education for that matter at the time. Given that very few secondary schools existed at the time, in fact, 
In 1961, a mere 16% of Barbadian population benefited from secondary education, which meant that 84% did not benefit from a secondary education. Thus, despite the challenges and with the support of combined members, many families sacrificed much by doing all in their power to bypass the handicaps imposed by the limited educa education available in the to the large masses of the island's population. Hence, to have received the secondary education was a major accomplishment in itself. It meant possibilities for a greater economic future that lay ahead. Indeed, Evans made good on the sacrifice made on, behalf, on, the, on his behalf when he sought and gained employment in the public health field. <coughs> As a public health inspector, he took advantage of opportunities that came his way to the point of excelling in ways however, however measured. His success also brought other opportunities such as being sent abroad for overseas advanced training in Jamaica and in the United Kingdom. Coincidentally, as a health inspector, Evans was first attached to Six Rose Health Center, St. Philip, and it is while working at this location that he met the love of his life, Lucille Charlotte Aline Haywood. Ironically, both Lucille and Evans separately left Barbados on April 13, 1963, for continued training in their respective fields. Before promising future ahead on return to the island, Evans and Lucille were married on this very date, April 13, in 1963, at the St. George Parish Church. After marriage, they purchased a home in St. Helen Bel Air, St. George, and lived at that location until he migrated to Canada in 1968. Throughout their time in Canada, Evans and Lucille remained proud members of the London community as public servants in the nursing field and serving in other areas of social work. Hanging in their homes are diverse accolades that attest to his and Lucille's overall contribution to Canada as a whole and to the London community in particular over the years. On further reflection, religion played a pivotal role in Evans' upbringing and this carried over to just about everything he did and the way he acted throughout his life. His overall love for humanity compelled him to be mindful of others and to be compassionate in his undertakings. His was a life not lacking in purpose, but striving always to make and leave the world a better place to the better of his, best of his ability. His maxim, speak well of others or nothing at all, is hard to forget. Such is the legacy left for our application. In celebration of his life and passing, this eulogy has afforded me opportunity to share and reflect on the man himself, his talents, his willingness to undertake responsibility, and his desire for success as he pursued opportunities wherever they abounded. With these chapters in his life now closed, may his soul now find rest in the arms of a merciful God on whom he greatly relied as a personal, constant, and abiding friend. For his part, I'm sure everyone would welcome it being said of him as Paul wrote in his letter to Timothy. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous one, will give me on that day, not me only, but all of them that love his appearing. In celebration of his passing, let's take time to ponder our own sojourn in the words of Stephen Grawlett, who wrote, I shall pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness that I can show to any human being, let me know. Let me not forget, defer, or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. Evans was predeceased by his parents, Gladys and Theophilus, in 1973 and 1976, and brothers Keith and Ormond in 2006 and 2018. He is survived by his wife of 60 years, Lucille, who is now in a Chesley nursing home in London, Ontario. 
He leaves as well siblings, Candace, Tyrone, and Angela, and numerous nev nephews, cousin, friends, and others. In closing, may the soul now rest in eternal peace and light perpetual evermore be shown. And I'll close with one of my compositions. Parting is hard, but such is life. Like flowers we blossom, then bloom and die. Yet no flower is forgotten because it dies. Its beauty and fragrance are forever remembered by those that benefited while it flourished. Rest come to the weary we've often heard. Many yearn for it, while others simply take things as they come. You chose the latter, and thereby provided the ease that came to typify the style you so well display, displayed. Farewell, our beloved. A final farewell to this earthly life with its challenges unending. So many things to us you meant, but above all, thanks a million times over for simply being a friend. Rest well, my friend, until we meet again. Now stand and sing together hymn number 314, God of Mercy, God of Grace. The first Bible reading is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verses 2 to 7. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven singing, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. 
and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I made all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This is the word of the Lord. You may remain seated as we're led in the chanting of Psalm 46, found on page 4 of your service booklet. This will be followed by the second scripture reading, Psalm 46.
The reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going, Thomas said to him. Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here ends the reading. Stand and sing together hymn number 480, Thy Way, Not Mine, O Lord. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart 
We now and always accept in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please sit. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. The above quoted text comes from the passage of scripture that has been set for morning prayer in the, the church's tradition for today. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 11. The discipline of morning prayer allows for clergy and parishioners alike to read significant portions of scripture in a systematic and sometimes thematic way over a two-year cycle. Occasionally, as in the case of today, it has provided me with a perfect text to reflect upon as we meet in this funeral service. As I ponder today's funeral, mindful of the grief that the family feels, I'm hopeful that we would find confidence and, and comfort in the faith that we hold in the risen Christ. The fact that we have gathered here in what is considered the home church of our departed brother would indicate, among other things, that the Christian faith has been central to our nurture and development through the years. Having lived overseas for over 50 years, we have brought, brought Evan's mortal remains back to its spiritual home to open ourselves to God's comfort to scripture and to feel the support of the prayers of the church and the faithful community. <clears throat> Though Evans was a contemporary of my older cousins like Vince and Edward, I have boyhood memories of Gregor. His name was a household name, and he was a person who my mother spoke quite fondly of. I'm thankful for the opportunity to bring this message, which I believe would offer comfort and hope as we all grieve his passing. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures is what Paul offered to the Corinthian Christians in the midst of their concern about the death of faithful people. Paul dealt with several challenges which the Corinthian congregation faced after his departure. There were questions about Paul's own authority, moral and ethical issues as to how they should behave in personal and marital relations, how they should handle disputes in the community, the place of spiritual gifts, their lack of unity was evident, and the doctrinal issue of the resurrection were some of the features that affected their common life. What should they believe? The doctrinal issue on the resurrection of Christ and how that belief undergirds the belief in the resurrection of the deceased believers was the final one that he tackled. After dealing with the matter of spiritual gifts, Paul addressed the question of the resurrection of believers. They had some doubts which arose primarily from two sources. The fact that the community comprised of persons who were Jews and the Jewish background was so divided on the issue of the resurrection that one could hardly come out of it with an assurance that there was that clear path of what to believe about people who die. As time progressed, their belief system progressed in the direction of the resurrection. 
While the Old Testament doesn't use the word resurrection, it does include several allusions to resurrection. For example, Isaiah 25, part of verse 8, reads, and I quote, He will swallow up death forever. The second concern affecting the community was the fact that Corinth was also influenced by its Greek culture. And there was a form of platonic dualism which regarded life into two parts, as good and evil, matter and non-matter. Many considered the human body as unimportant and or evil, and the soul was good. For the Greeks, the body was something to leave behind gladly. Their focus was the preservation of the soul. It was important to emphasize the wholeness of person, body, and soul. That emphasis continued in the early church. And Paul wanted the Corinthian Christians to know that belief in the resurrection, both Christ's resurrection and their general resurrection in the last days, was the foundational feature of the Christian faith. And so they should have no doubt. Hence, he said, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. The people could have hope, even though some of the believers had died before Christ's return. The death of a loved one, no matter the age at which the per person has died, or the circumstances of the death, whether sudden or after a long period of illness, causes us to grieve. We feel the sense of loss, and we ask several questions, perhaps not the questions which the Corinthian Christians ask about death and resurrection, but we ask questions about the meaning of life and our relationship with the deceased. And as part of our grieving process, we go through various stages. We experience shock, the loss of vitality. We move to develop an awareness as we shed our tears and express other forms of sadness or feel lonely. And ultimately, we are able to, to cope when we resolve that this is reality and that life can indeed go on. We have accepted a new status that our dear loved one has gone to the great beyond, as we will say. Through each stage, which could range from two weeks or two to five years, we seek comfort in the Christian church, and the funeral service is likely to feature prominently in helping us to cope with our grief. It brings to the fore the richness of the Christian heritage, the singing of hymns, the prayers, the ritual, the music. The entire atmosphere tells us that death is not the end but that the Christian church presents to all believers and all who share in the experience the hope of resurrection. The liturgy and pastoral care of the church offered to the clergy and some lay people also help us to cope with our grief as we are reconciled with our sense of loss and as we are sustained from day to day, and as we are guided from today to tomorrow and to the months ahead, and until we eventually feel that there is growth, we are healed after the loss. Grieving is an integral part of the process of death. For when our loved ones die, we need 
to grieve. But again, as St. Paul tells us, this time to the church at Thessalonica, we do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Today our hope is in the resurrection. That God is in the midst of life and God is in the midst of us even now offering us new life and that beyond the grave there is a promise of the resurrection. Meantime, as we grieve, we must support each other by our presence as we come together in our numbers to share in the funeral service or as we participate online, we express our solidarity with the grieving family and we affirm the relationship which we have had with our deceased loved one. In addition, as we show our support by our presence, we also invited to show our support by our ongoing prayers. Remembering the loved one who've gone, remembering Gregor for all that he's meant to us in terms of his family, his industry, his service, his work in the Ministry of Health, his neighborly relations in Tots or Bel Air or in Canada. We remember all of those things and remember him for all that he has been to us. But we also add to our prayers the prayers for his immediate family those who mourn intimately. Within the context of the Christian church, therefore, its liturgy, its rituals, we own the sense of loss, but at the same time, we have say that this is not the end. God, who is the giver of life, has raised Jesus Christ from the dead and has promised that all who believe will have similar benefits. On behalf of my family, I take this opportunity to join with other members, the Bell, the Braffitt family, to extend sincere condolences and pray that in this act of worship, you have been comforted as you grieve. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. Amen.
section will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and your response shall be, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life. And may we, with him, pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as the acts by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that cast in all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Evans McGregor, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way, and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, to the ages of ages. Amen. Give rest to Christ, your servant, Evan McGregor, with your sins. Where sorrow and pain are no more, when I decide a life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of humankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created the saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And give rest of Christ to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither silent but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our God.
Acknowledge me, humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own fold, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed breast of our last and into the glorious company of the saints in Christ. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Now sing together hymn number 757 from the Mission Praise, When Peace Like a River Attendeth My Way. During the singing of this hymn, an offering will be taken towards the ongoing maintenance and upkeep of the church. Thank the family for allowing us to take this offering and we thank you for your contributions. Hymn number 757 from the Mission Praise.
Mitzvahs. was a wretch 
I remember who I was I was lost, I was blind I was running out of time Sin separated The breach was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm You held me in your sight So you made a way Across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne To build it here inside And there at the cross You paid the debt I owe Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope Thank you Jesus for the blood of mine Thank you Jesus it has washed me white Thank you Jesus you have saved my life Brought me from the darkness into glorious light Took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin You were buried for three days But then you walked right out again And now death, it has no sting That's right. And life has no end yes. For I have been transformed by the blood
within your mighty hands Cause when the oceans rise and thunders roar I will soar with you above the storm Father, you are King over the flood And I will be still and know you our God Find rest my soul Find rest my soul Christ alone In Christ alone Know His power In quietness Cause when the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still. Isaiah 43, verse 1, it says, Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. When you go through the deep waters, they will not overwhelm you. You will not drown. And when you go through the fire of oppression, the flames will not consume you. You will not be burned up. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. My friend, there is no storm that is too big that God cannot calm in your life today. Maybe a storm in your business, a storm in your marriage, a storm of disease raging in your body I want you to hear these words from the Savior tonight peace be still peace be still and know that I am God because 
Is when the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm, Father. You. God. 
I stand in the midst of a multitude Of those from every tribe and tongue We are your people Redeemed by your blood Rescued from death by your love There are no words good enough to thank you to express my praise But I will lift up my voice And sing from my heart With all of my strength Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah To the Lamb Hallelujah, hallelujah By the blood of Christ we stand God. 
Just remember that God is always working in ways you cannot see. That's right. Our God is able. He is mighty. He is faithful. And He never sleeps. Oh, He never slumbers. He never tires of hearing our prayer. When we are weak, oh, He becomes strong. says to cast all of your cares on him because he cares for you. My friend, this is more than a promise. It's a command. So be at rest because while we're worshiping, guess what? God is working in ways that you cannot see. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. Oh, he never sleeps. He never tires. He never tires of hearing our prayer. When we are weak, oh, He becomes stronger. So rest in His love and cast all of your cares on Him. He never, never, He never sleeps, oh no. He never tires, He never tires of hearing our prayer. stronger so rest in his love and cast all of your cares so rest in his love and cast all of your cares so rest in his love and cast all of your cares on him Press. 
contain your splendor you have been and you will always be so I will never be afraid for you are with me I'll trust in you for all my days all my hope is in you My strength is in you On the mountain, in the valley From the darkest depths into the sea Your sovereign Lord And you will always be Your arms you hold forever Our present, our past and future You have been and you will always be So I will never be afraid For you are with me I'll trust in you for all my days Strength is in you On the mountain, in the valley From the darkest depths into the sea Your sovereign Lord And you will always be In 
the valley From the darkest depths into the sea Your sovereign Lord And you will always be You have walked this road before me You have seen it all and shown me You have been and you will always be If everything I stand on ceases I fall into your arms, Lord Jesus You are there and you will always be Sovereign Lord, and you will always be. Yes, you will. Oh, you're sovereign Lord, and you will always be. today And though I haven't lost my faith I must confess right now That it's hard for me to pray mm, But I don't know what to say And I don't know where to start but as you give the grace With all that's in my heart I will sing And I will praise Even in my darkest hour Through the sorrow and the pain I will sing And I will I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ, henceforth says the Spirit. They may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers, like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death, to whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by your sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Saviour, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts, in your mercy hear our prayer, forgive us our sins, and at our last hour let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Evans McGregor, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, 
ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother Evans McGregor, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who have bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those that are hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those that love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life we may rest in him, and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our Mediator and Redeemer. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen. The hymns are sprinted.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, this your servant who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace to the same Christ, O Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.
Yeah. 